He is an American country music superstar whose lyrics speak of the simple country life. But here on this rugged high desert stage, there's another luminary getting all the attention. This area has become one of the largest conservation initiatives in North America, and there's a lot to learn about this working outdoor laboratory. We'll see what happens when this deer hunting singer from the South trades his six string for some black powder, a new pair of hiking boots, and heads out in pursuit of his first bull elk. Tales of the hunt, around fires told of majestic elk and the country they live in. Adventures etched in the journal. Chronicles is brought to you by Midway USA. Blake Shelton has become one of the biggest names in modern country music. He writes songs that reveal his personality and his passions in life. Growing up hunting deer in southern Oklahoma, Blake is at home in the outdoors. But a black powder elk hunt in the high desert mountains of west central New Mexico is definitely no walk in the park. This will be Blake's sixth hunt for a Rocky Mountain elk, and as he heads out to camp with legendary race car team owner Richard Childers and one of his top drivers, Clint Boyer, they're doubtful that he'll ever find the bull of his dreams. He'll be the last one to get one you watch. It's good to have friends come with you, I'll tell you that. Uh, guys that really build you up, make you feel confident. Uh, it's a good thing Richard and Clint are both here. Beat me down as soon as I start having fun and relaxing. They remind me what a, a, a worthless elk, elk hunter I really am. I've taken a lot of animals with my bow. Obviously, I've taken a lot of animals with, with a rifle. Uh, I've shot one deer in my life uh, with a muzzleloader, which is what this hunt is. And, and that particular muzzleloader was one that Michael Waddell handed me at a ranch in Texas and said, hey man, go take a deer with this uh, muzzleloader and see if you like it. I actually have my own muzzleloader now and uh, this ranch we're going to is that there's no uh, rifles. A little bit nervous about that because I like the security of, uh, of the bolt. <laughs> and, uh, but all this stuff, it's, it makes, makes you a better hunter. I know that I'm in for a challenge and it's not gonna be easy, but uh, that's hunting, that's why I love it. Blake is hunting the 135,000 acre conservation showcase known as the Torstenson Wildlife Center in West Central New Mexico. This area harbors thickly timbered ridges, rocky canyons, and sagebrush speckled flats. Although this fertile oasis in the high desert spawns abundant elk, Blake and his guide Josh have a lot of territory to cover. They also face a difficult challenge of trying to pattern those post-rut bulls. Since how there's not an elk within 300 miles of this spot we're setting, is it okay if I talk at this level? It's, uh... I do have a serious question. How, how is it possible that I feel, I can actually feel wind blowing, but there's no oxygen in it? It's amazing, isn't it? New Mexico. Pretty high, 8,000 feet probably here. Maybe that's why there's no elk in this area is because there's no freaking oxygen to breathe. Yeah, it's been quite an, quite an experience hunting with Blake this week. A lot of joking around, and we've had a good time. Although yeah. this stuff right here is pretty good, I've been eating it. We'll head out. Let's go. Head back this way and see what we can find. Everything goes wrong on, on these elk hunts, uh, when especially when they're not rutting. You know, you can't you can't call them in. You got to go to them somehow. So. After a long day of high altitude hiking, Blake and Josh finally find a decent bull bedded on a far ridge. But they still have a lot of ground to cover in order to get within muzzleloader range. 
we got on one the first evening and, and uh, tried to get in on him and got there with, with a little bit of camera light left and sure enough, by the time we came over the, the rise where he was supposed to be, he wasn't there. On to the next. Yeah. <coughs> oh, God dang. Ow! Why does everything here have to try to get me? This remarkable landscape has lured Blake Shelton away from his busy tour schedule in pursuit of its renowned trophy-sized elk. We'll find out if Blake's elk hunting misfortunes will haunt him here in the high desert of New Mexico. Country music sensation Blake Shelton has come to the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation's Torsons and Wildlife Center for his sixth elk hunt. Although he's been unsuccessful on the previous five, this conservation showcase is well known for world-class bulls. But a post-rut behavior pattern has blanketed silence among the herd, making Blake's spot and stalk pursuit just a bit more challenging. I guess uh, after four or five weeks worth of rutting, maybe that has something to do with why they're laid up. I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, I think they're pretty wore out. You know, it's kind of the week after the rut, they're just kind of eating and trying to heal up and yeah. rest up. Laying down a lot and they're not moving much. Well, at least we can move. Yeah. Let's go find him. Right. As the sun climbs higher into the sky on day two, Blake is joined by RMEF CEO David Allen. They finally spot a good bull feeding along a far ridge, way out of muzzleloader range. But it appears this bull's not too far out to catch a group of hunters trying to sneak a peek. Man, we are so busted by that bull. There's no doubt where he's looking. The bull seems to be relaxed with the situation, so the guys back out to strategize a stalk to get within range. Just the party of her, you know, it's gonna be. Yeah. At least he's not, though. Um... That club right there with him. There's three green trees on huh? it. Somewhere around here. Successfully closing the distance, Blake may have gotten within range after all, but it looks like the thick cover has brought yet another of Blake's elk hunting pursuits to a disappointing end. A couple of, we found a couple of nice bulls this week that just, we got close within within range, but they were just in the thick stuff, you know, we couldn't, couldn't see them, couldn't get a shot. And they just weren't moving around much. It's kind of kind of tough to get, you know, get in close. We'll find out if Blake's elk hunting misfortunes will haunt him here in the high desert of New Mexico. I don't have a very good feeling at this moment. I don't know, it's getting late. This is probably be when we should be sneaking in on one we found. We just ain't finding one. Blake Shelton has come to the Torstenson Wildlife Center in West Central New Mexico in hopes of shooting his first elk. The bulls are in post rut, so they're staying still and quiet, making them very difficult to locate. So Blake and his guy Josh have called for some extra backup from the ranch manager, Tony Pacelli. This morning, Tony, Tony Pacelli was helping us. That helped out, out a lot. Uh, he got us right in there, right where we needed to be. Uh, we saw a lot of bulls get up two or three times, you know, within 30 minutes, just laying down and feeding. This week is just, it's post-rut, and they're just resting up. They don't, they're not moving around much. 
We've seen a lot of nice young bulls that we didn't really want to shoot just because they'd, they'd be a lot better next year. I don't have a very good feeling at this moment. I don't know, it's getting late. This will probably be when we should be sneaking in on one we found. We just ain't finding one. Well, it's the uh, last day of my New Mexico elk hunt. And uh, actually, the last about hour and a half left of the entire hunt. And uh, man, you couldn't ask for a better weather situation. They had this front move in about two hours ago. And uh, man, it dropped probably 10 or 15 degrees. The wind stopped blowing. I mean, this is, it's classic just being in the mountains type weather. And uh, but uh, man, I gotta, I gotta say, you know, it's it's hard not to be a little bit disappointed. Like I said, I, I can take a hint. <laughs> I'm really starting to think God doesn't want me to kill an elk. And you know, uh, outside of uh, just not being able to get on a, on an elk, uh, this, this overall experience has been pretty awesome. Big fan of of. Uh, NASCAR, and, uh, and a big fan of, of outdoorsmen, and hanging out in, in an elk camp with uh, Clint Boyer and Richard Childress and Earl Bentz is, and that's a, this is, that's redneck heaven, man. Taking care of old Red, now Red, he's the damnedest dog that I've ever seen. I think they want me to get an elk more than more than they want to get an elk, and that's pretty cool to me. You can just you can just hear it in what they say and, and how they react to you know us coming in and, and uh, not having any luck. Uh, that's that's something that probably means more to me than than anything. Is just knowing that uh, you know that it matters to them. So uh, not walking away with here with with uh, with an elk is is one thing, but but. Walking away from here with uh, some some new friends, uh, that's a way bigger deal to me. And uh, I'll remember this hunt for the rest of my life just because of that. Love got me in here and love got me. Blake's newfound friends rally around an effort to do whatever it takes to get him his first elk. But with time running out on a rugged post-rut hunt, will it be too little, too late? Country music sensation Blake Shelton has come to the Torsenson Wildlife Center in New Mexico for a muzzleloader elk hunt. Although this ranch is known for a healthy herds of trophy class bulls, it's post-rut, making it a real challenge to pattern and locate the big boys. So after several exhausting days of rugged high altitude hikes with very little luck, Blake's last night in camp was spent singing the blues. I guess at some point during the night last night, I, I was actually so exhausted, I went to bed about 9 o'clock, and I guess Richard uh, set up with, with the uh, guides, and, and they came up with a plan. All right, so here's the deal. We, we found out uh, yesterday, or last night, I guess, we got into camp and ate dinner and found that Richard told me that we really don't have to leave till, what did you say, 9.30? Yeah. 9.30 this morning, which is... This works out perfect, because I said yesterday in, in, in my interview uh, that it was more important for me to, to walk away from this camp with, with uh, some new friends than it was an elk. And after sleeping and, and thinking about that statement, I've decided that's bull crap. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I like Earl all right, but I really want an elk. The last morning of Blake's hunt, I walked into the lodge and could see Blake sitting there, you know, drinking a cup of coffee, thinking, I'm sure he was thinking that uh, there's just no way I'm ever gonna kill an elk. And Richard had spoke with Blake that morning and said that I was gonna go along, try to help. They came up with a plan uh, for me to, uh, before daylight, be on top of this knob 
uh, that, that overlooks miles and miles and miles of just prairie land and, and right next to the mountains uh, is this knob and the, and the animals will be moving out of there, uh, you know, at first light and going back up into the mountains. Josh, myself and Blake, we took off that morning and uh, with high expectations of trying to get something down in the time frame that we had. We uh, went to a place that we had a little bunch of cows. There was still a little bit of rutting activity, uh, thinking that there were going to be mostly small bulls with the herd. But uh, we were being optimistic in that maybe there was going to be something in that little herd for Blake to shoot. We had a big bull, or at least we thought, big bull bugling right up underneath us and we couldn't see him. That bull stepped out and he was a nice looking six point and we had Blake set up to take a shot. Uh, when I noticed out about 200 yards, I could see another bull coming into these elk, a uh, much better bull than the bull he was about to shoot. Like that five point, it's a five by six right below us. But I think this bull that's coming up through here is gonna be a better bull. Let's just wait on him. basically held Blake off again and I'm thinking, I know he's thinking I'm crazy, I know he's thinking that man I got a shot at an elk here, my first elk, and nobody's gonna let me shoot him. Coming up when he gets to that yellow grass, if he's walking through it, I'll stop him for you. Okay. took his first shot, he hit the bull hard, it didn't knock him down. It's the coolest thing to watch somebody take a shot at an animal with a muzzleloader, and, and now we gotta follow up with a second shot. I'm shaking so bad I can't get you in there. Blake was trying to get a primer in his rifle and he just shaking so much he couldn't get it in there. You got it, you got it, you got it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Yeah. Good shot, man. Oh. Yes. <laughs> the first out. <laughs> yes. Oh. 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 He did want me to get one. He just wanted me to suffer first. As soon as Blake made that second <clears throat> shot and that bull was on the ground, everything was just going oh. crazy. I got on the radio, called to make sure that Richard Childress and uh, David Allen can get over there and be able to witness the first kill for Blake Shelton. And we started off the hill, and as we're approaching this elk, you can just see Blake is just getting, he, I mean, he's ready to run over to it. Yeah. Woo! This is the first time I've ever done this, ever, ever in my life. Man, nice boy. Nice boy. Oh, awesome. awesome. How about that, man? Here he comes. Woo! Huh? <laughs> man, this makes the trip all worth it right here. You talk about... Right. Got that, that elk. That's a pass on the last lap right there hey, the win, ain't it? It's a pass to win right there. Thank you so Everybody. much, man. Right, man. Great 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 elk. Thank you. Man, shooting my first elk, to me, uh, is... It's, it's as awesome as having a number one hit, you know? It's, it's, uh, it's like winning the lottery. It's, it's uh, you know, it's that classic, ultimate, big game, that western big game that as a kid growing up in Oklahoma, uh, I was unfamiliar with elk. They were just something that I saw in magazines and books and on television and just dreamed about taking one one day. And, but uh, it's happened. I mean, it's, it's a great feeling to have, to have gone and, and uh, came back with, with, uh, with the ultimate big game animal, Rocky Mountain elk. It's unbelievable.